Hello again, welcome back to our computer vision series. Today we are going to talk about convolutions, uh, which is the crucial component in any computer vision neural network. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to remind you what we did the last time. So we trained a dense neural network to recognize images um, of digits in MNIST dataset. So basically we flattened the image, we passed it through some dense layers, and did the classification. Uh, and this, this sort of worked, right? We had some pretty decent accuracy, but this approach in itself has some fundamental problems that are not solved with just dense layers. Um, so first problem is just the parameter matrix size. So the size is input times the output. So the output is the hidden size of the network in our case. And then the, the input size is basically the number of pixels in an image times the number of colors. So for low resolution grayscale image like this, which is 28 times 28, this is something like 400k parameters, which is already not so great because we only have 60k training examples. So ideally, when training a network, you should aim to have more training examples than parameters to be able to effectively optimize those parameters. And if you were to go with something real like this with high resolution, that's already 400 million parameters. So we definitely don't have enough examples to optimize a network like that. Second problem is that 2D information is important. This is how humans recognize images, and we don't use it in the network. So literally, the first thing that we did was flatten out the image. So in 2D space, the concept of the number seven is quite simple. It's just one stroke and then another stroke. And then in, in 1D, that's already sort of weird pattern of pixels that is much harder to recognize. Uh, and obviously this is not good. We want our network to be close to humans in, in the terms of how it recognizes pictures because humans do it well. Third problem, uh, we don't use information about pixel proximity. So even though, you know, you might spot some patterns in this 1D representation of the image, this is not actually how the network sees it because for the network, each pixel, the, the actual order of the pixels does not matter, right? Because this is how sort of matrix multiplication works. If you just randomly shuffle the pixels, nothing will change uh, for the model as long as you do it consistently in training and inference. So again, try recognizing something like this, right? Uh, it's impossible because humans don't actually look at pixels. They look at shapes, they look at edges, they look at strokes and, you know, how they combine together in two-dimensional space. And just this looks like a random cloud of pixels and it's hard to imagine that you can even train yourself to recognize these pictures. And uh, like proper pictures like this, we can recognize quite easily. Uh, and the fourth problem is that basically every neuron is responsible for its own pixel. So every pixel has the unique set of neurons that is used, that is activated only for that specific pixel, which means that if you had like a limited data set with numbers at specific spots, if you would then shift this number a little bit to the right, a completely different set of parameters will activate in our network and the network might not be able to recognize it, right? Which is like, you know, this is number seven, this is number seven slightly shifted to the right, but I don't know what it is, never seen it before. That's weird, right? Uh, and this partly explains why do we need so many parameters because every pixel has its own sort of set of parameters to remember what is here. And it so happens that neural uh, that convolutions actually solve all of these problems. So uh, let's go through this example really quick. 
So what is convolution? Uh, convolution is basically an operation where you have a kernel, uh, also called a filter sometimes. You have an input image. You start by placing the kernel in the top left corner. Then you do element-wise multiplication. So this one gets multiplied by this zero. This two gets multiplied by this one. This three gets multiplied by this one. And then this four gets multiplied, multiplied by this zero. So we get zero times um, one times zero plus two times one plus three times one plus four times zero equals five. So we write one output to the result. Then we shift our kernel a little bit to the right, in this case by just one pixel, and just repeat the process. I note that it's not at all matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication looks completely different. This is convolution. Uh, and convolution actually, convolutions were a thing way before um, neural networks, right? So this is a simple example, and, and they were used in image processing. So this is a simple example of a sharpened convolution, which can be seen as invert of blur, uh, which basically you know sharpens the image by applying this kernel uh, to, to every area. And you can sort of see how this works, right? So if when blurring, we want to sort of take a pixel and then try to propagate the signal from this pixel, pixel to nearby pixels. This sharpened convolution is basically the reverse. We want to look at the difference between this pixel and the neighboring pixels. Um, I also want to show you a few websites on the internet that showcase various convolutions. So here is just an image of a dude, right? This is how it looks. And so this is the, the sharpened kernel apply to this image so we can sort of see that you know stuff stands out much more because of that we can go for blur instead now it's blurred uh, right here are some more examples uh, of convolutions like this so this is blur this is sharpen uh, this is an interesting one here we have this is called Sobel edge detector, right? So given an image, just detect the edges within the image. Um, and here's the same one with a slightly different picture, right? So we have this astronaut in space. We apply basically two convolutions, one after another, and we get just the edges of the astronaut. Uh, so this is quite cool. Um, it can be used as sort of image processing tool. Um, apart from that, um, we we can use this as a sort of dimensionality reduction technique. So with stride equal to one, as we can see, starting from input of six times six, we get five times five. So the size of the picture shrank by, by a factor of one. Um, we can also, instead of shifting our kernel by one each time, we can shift it by two. This is called stride. And so instead of five by five, we will get three by three output. So our picture shrank considerably. Um, another thing is called padding. So we can sort of pad our image with zeros. And so this allows us to apply the convolution kernel to the uh, pixels that are on the edge. So in this example, we have stride two, so the picture still shrinks, but usually padding is used to sort of preserve the original size of the image. And the final formula for the actual size uh, looks like this. Um, we will actually need that when constructing our network because we need to understand all the output sizes in order to define our dense layers. Uh, and then again, apart from convolutions, uh, there is a thing called pooling, like max pooling, which is basically instead of multiplying every coordinate 
by the corresponding coordinate in a kernel, we just take a max of all four of them, for example. And this is called max pulling. Um, and here is an example on our data set, right? So we can start with the sharpened data set, uh, sharpened kernel, which sort of makes the picture look like this. And then we apply max pulling, which uh, with uh, stride two, which shrinks the image quite significantly. But as you can see, it still looks almost exactly the same, number seven. Um, right. So. That was about convolutions in general in image processing. Now, in neural networks, there are some extra stuff that is going on. So first, we have channels, right? So one channel is that is when you have just input image, which is a matrix, a 2D matrix, and you have output. Now, what if you have color, for example? So now, instead of one input matrix, you would have three of them. You would have to define a kernel that is a set of three matrices. And then to get the output, you would have to multiply coordinate-wise all three of them with the corresponding colors. And then you'd sum them up all together. And these are called input channels. The same way you can basically define six independent sets of these kernels and then apply them to the input image independently, getting six different results. And these are called output channels. So this is basically the way of um, sort of applying completely independent convolutions to the same image. Uh, and we sort of do it all in parallel. And the Output channels of our first convolution can be seen as input channels or colors uh, of our second convolution. So basically, these channels and the colors are sort of the same. Uh, and the reason we want them is to let the network pass more information from layer to layer. So one logical explanation for this might be that, you know, when recognizing an actual image from the real world, one channel might be responsible for edges, and then another channel might be responsible for the material that is obviously completely different to edges, and so on. So the more the better, usually. And th this is actually the um, architecture that we are going to use to classify MNIST digits next. So we start with an image, we do five by five convolution with six output channels, then we shrink it down with max pulling, then we apply uh, another set of convolutions with 16 output channels, and that we use as an input to our dense layers, and then classification. So these convolutions actually solve all of the four problems that we've discussed before. So problem one is parameter size, Right, uh, with five by five kernel and one color, we only have 25 parameters. Uh, and with six input channels and 16 output channels, that's still just 2,400 parameters. And this kernel size is independent of the actual picture size. So no matter how big the picture is, we just use the same kernel every time. So we are no longer dependent on the resolution of the image itself. Um, 2D and spatial awareness are really well represented in convolutions because of the way we sort of stride along the image with our filter, with our kernel. Uh, we always sort of look at the pixels that are only close together. And we do that in 2D space because our kernel is 2D matrix. So this lets us efficiently use this special informa uh, information. And finally, since the kernel, the same kernel is used to process every piece of the image, we should be able to recognize the same pattern no matter where it is. Is it to the left? Is it to the right? Is it shifted a little bit? That should be fine. Um, right. Now let's do some coding. So I'm still going to show it on the digits MNIST dataset, 
So right now we are looking at the same code that we had before. So we're just importing some libs. We are loading the MNIST data. We are defining the data loader. This is how we can take a look at the actual image. Um, and then take care of the devices. And this is our actual network. So we start with the first convolution. So in channels of the first convolution is just the color. And then out channels of the first convolution would be the in channels of the second convolution and so on. So we define both convolutions with tried one. Kernel size is five. And then in between them, we apply the polling with stride 2, uh, which lets us shrink the image. Now, before we define some linear layers on top of that, we need to understand the sizes. So we have started with 28 times 28 image. Uh, then, let me just remind you the general rule. Uh, so the output size is going to be um, shrank by kernel size minus one, basically. So with kernel size five, the height and width of the image will shrink by four, yielding 24 times 24. Then we do max pooling with stride of two, which shrinks it two times in each dimension. Then we do another convolution with size five, which yields eight times eight. And then second pooling yields four times four. So we basically shrink our 28 by 28 image down to four by four, but, in, but now we have 16 channels. And so we will flatten all of that out, uh, which will yield 16 times four times four um, final size. And then we get the first output size as 120, then we shrink it down a little bit to 84, and then to 10 because we have 10 classes to classify. Uh, we apply it on one of our examples from the batch. We can see that it works. Uh, so we can proceed. Now, another thing that I want to look at is the size of the network and the layers, right? So what I do here is I iterate over all the model parameters, which yields a um, layer on each step. Uh, so the first layer with the size of 150 is the parameters for the first convolution and then, then the biases. And we can see that we have two convolutions. So the first one is really small because it has just one input channel and six output channels and its size is 150. And then Second convolution is slightly bigger, but still, you know, 2,400. And the first layer, the first dense layer is still the biggest in our network, but it's now only 30K. Compare that to 400K in our full dense network that we had before. So the total size is like 10 times smaller right now. So let's go ahead and actually train the model. I'll start with the five epochs, see how it goes. So we can already see that, you know, it seems to take a bit longer to get started. Uh, right, so accuracy barely goes up, but it goes up indeed. So let's see what will happen after 95 more. And here we are, um, we are through 95 epochs and we are down to 97.8 accuracy on the test set. Let's just compare that to our previous model. So the previous model was 94.2 after 100 epochs in total. And here we are at 97.8, which is my, much closer to 100 despite the fact that uh, the model itself is almost 10 times smaller. 
So this is this is a really good result. Uh, and right now we know that convolutions are used in pretty much every state-of-the-art model. So this is really an important piece that we need to understand. Um, and finally, I wanted to just show the actual how the output of the first convolution actually looks like. So uh, if if we quickly come back to the definition of the model, we actually saved all these convolutions as just the class fields of the model itself. So we can still access them afterwards. Uh, I need to call this dot detach dot CPU because of some errors that I was getting from um, the tensor not being connected to gradients and so on. And so the result of applying the convolution is a tensor. Since we had six output channels, we get the tensor of six times 24 times 24. So we actually, uh, to, to get the actual image out of that, we select the first one, which is just the batch dimension. And I'm looking at the channel number five. And this is how it looks like. And here is channel number three, sorry, four and three. So it still sort of looks like number seven with different um, edges highlighted, I would say. So yeah, looking forward to doing the same for more interesting pictures and seeing how it works.